Hello, friends, and welcome to this midweek devotion. It's good to see you. After a couple of weeks away, as I mentioned in this past this past week, my wife and I were away for a pastors and wives retreat for renewal and refreshment. It was good to be away, but it's good to be back with you again. It's the week leading up to Thanksgiving Day that we will celebrate on Monday, this national holiday, where we give thanks for all that God has provided. And in this, week, devo this week's devotion, I want to think for a few minutes on what theologians would call the providence of God. What the catechism would ask in a question, what then do we mean when we, uh, when, when we talk about the providence of God? And would answer that question with these words, the almighty and ever-present power of God upholds heaven and earth with all creatures and so governs them that herbs and grass, rain and drought, fruitful and barren years, meat and drink, health and sickness, rich, riches and poverty. Yes, all things come not by chance, but by his fatherly hand. That word providence the Lord provides. It comes from the Hebrew word Yireh or Yahweh Yireh, the Lord provides. There's another way that the Hebrews might translate that word. It is also translated as the Lord sees. And so when Abraham would take his son to the mountain to be sacrificed, and his son would ask the question, where is the lamb for the burnt offering Abraham would answer that question God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering my son and he's able to answer that way because he knows God is the God who sees and then when God showed Abraham the ram that was caught in the thorns in Genesis chapter 22 verse 24 Abraham named that place the Lord will provide he named that place Yahweh Yireh the Lord provides because the Lord sees. Why does God's seeing in Hebrew mean that he will provide? And I think the deepest answer to that question is that God never simply sees without acting, that, that God is present in this world, that God is upholding all things, as the catechism would say. God sees, and where he sees, he acts. Wherever God is looking, God is acting. As one author would write, if God perceives, he performs, as he would later write, wherever he, in, a, in a, a nice twist of phrase, he writes, wherever he patrols, he controls. As we think about this in scripture, I love the way this passage of scripture is often paired with that passage of scripture in Romans chapter 8. Listen to these words. Paul would write, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And then later on, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, what a glorious promise, what a glorious hope, and what a sure foundation we can build our lives on. It's a sure foundation, and as the catechism would go on, why will this, and asks the question, why does this comfort us? What good will it do? The catechism would answer that by saying that we may be patient in adversity. We may be thankful in prosperity and for what is future and, and for what is future, have good confidence in our faithful God and Father, that nothing, no creature sh sh shall separate us from his love, since all creatures are so in his hand, that without his will, they cannot so much as move. And then in conclusion, we read those words from Matthew 10, verse 29, are not two sparrows sold for a cent, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. Again, this is a, a reminder of the, the worth that God has placed in humanity, that he has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, that he continues to govern the universe so that all things uh, come together for our good, for his glory, 
and that Jesus Christ and his salvation on the cross, that that message is for us. Thanks for listening, friends, and I will see you again on Sunday for worship service and then again next week for another midweek devotion. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May he lift his face towards you and give you his peace.